Welcome to IDP Plus Trends. I'm Johnny Freakin' Fantasy. I'm your host. You can find me on Twitter at Johnny Freakin' F1. What I'm going to do for you in this episode, I'm going to give you 43 players to target in your startup dynasty IDP leagues. If you're already in a league, these are guys who probably are available on the waiver wire. You don't have to pay anything for You don't have to trade, give up anything. They're there. So if I make a good case, pick one of these guys up. But if not, if you're doing a startup, um, hear me out on these on these names I'm going to give you. I have 15 defensive linemen, 14 linebackers, and 14 defensive backs. Now, let me first say, in, in IDP, I do not practice. Uh, I do not preach to take uh, defensive players early. Just simply won't do it. Because what I do is I do my research. Um, if you're here right now, you're doing your research. You're getting a leg up on your league mates. And the reason why you don't want to draft those players early is because other people don't really know the, the defensive uh, side of the ball, generally speaking, as much as offense. Anyone can go look up uh, this year's sleepers for offense for any team. There's so many videos, so many articles. But when it comes to IDP, that information is not as easily accessible. So videos like this are going to help you get ahead with your IDP uh, startups, your IDP dynasty leagues. And even in redraft, this, this information applies to. So don't be the guy to take Foyer, to take Zaire Franklin early. We're going to get you get you right, get you set on guys who you can, hey, listen, take all your offensive players, fill out your starting lineup, get your sleepers, and then come back to the IDP guys because that's how you win your league. Um, that's how you, you get ahead of your league mates, and that's what we're going to do in this video. So before we do that, before we take a look first at the defensive linemen, uh, I wanted to tell you guys it's draft season, believe it or not. Get ahead of the game right now with Trophy Smack's gorgeous draft board, complete with player stickers so deep you couldn't possibly need them all. And for the first time, Trophy Smack has an IDP expansion pack for all of us defensive nerds out there. So check out the link in the notes and get your draft board today. So taking a look at defensive linemen, we've got 15 names to talk about. These guys are all owned in under 50% of the sleeper app. So they're out there right now. They're they're late, uh, you know, late picks. You don't have to spend a high price tag on them. And the first guy, he had a down year this year. Um, he's owned in 49% of sleeper leagues, so barely makes the cut here. And that's Uchenna Nwosu. Uh, Uchenna Nwosu, a big reason why he makes this list is because he tore a peck last year, missed 11 games. So he only played six games. In those six games, he had 16 tackles, two sacks, and two forced fumbles. Listen, this isn't a guy who you're getting to, to get tackles. This is a a splash play, force a fumble, cause a fumble, make a sack. That's the type of player he is. Um, right now, he's 27 years old in the prime of his career. I'm a little bit scratching my head about why he's so low owned, but this is definitely a guy that you can take advantage of. So if you're in a startup right now, um, a great number, number one maybe, but gr a great number two defensive lineman for your IDP team. Moving on, we got his counterpart, Boye Mafe, also on the Seattle Seahawks. Hey, he's even younger. If you're focused on age, Mafe is your guy. He's 25 years old, only owned in 40%, 47% of sleeper apps. He had a nice season. He had 52 tackles, nine sacks. Um, yeah, so we looked at Nwosu, a little bit more of a sack artist. Mafe gets the tackles too. So if you're in a blended league, if you're you know fo focusing on uh, tackles, if you know, you want to play it safe there. Mafe's definitely a, a multifaceted player. He had this past season 52 tackles with nine sacks. So his stuff plays, you know, no matter what your scoring is, he's going to get you points. He's dependable and he's only 25 years old. So this is a big season for Mafe and the Wosu for that matter. But um, they've, they've stayed there. They're, they're not rookies. This is uh, this is not their first go around. They've had some consistency there. And I think they both get better uh, this season in 2024. Speaking of an, uh, another uh, defensive lineman who you can get, who is 26, prime of their career, only owned in 41% of sleeper leagues, that is Jonathan Cooper. Jonathan Cooper is one of my favorite targets to get. Um, you know, for me, I'm more of a linebackers guy. I, I, I know linebackers more than I do defensive linemen. So Jonathan Cooper, what, what he allows me to do is play it safe. I know that I'm going to get production. He had a great season, his best season to date. Um, he had 70 tackles, eight and a half sacks. So my general rule of thumb, if you can give me 50 tackles and 10 sacks as a defensive lineman, that's tremendous. Um, he, he didn't quite meet the bill in the sacks. He had eight and a half. But when you give me 20 more sacks than 50 or 20 more tackles than 50, 70, 
I'm happy. That plays. So, again, no matter what your scoring is, Jonathan Cooper uh, is a guy who can – multi-facet player, prime of his career, only owned in 41% of sleeper leagues. And I think this is a guy who might be able to build on the season he had last year. And uh, eight and a half, ten sacks, it's definitely in the in the realm of possibilities. And he has a solid tackle floor. So Jonathan Cooper, one of my favorites. Uh, moving on, we have Kalijah Kansi. He had a solid uh, rookie year at the defensive end position for the Bucks. He's owned in 41% of leagues, only 23 years old. Again, for, if you're a dynasty guy and you like youth, uh, Kansi might be your guy. He had 26 tackles last season, so you're not really hunting him for the tackles. You're hunting him for the sacks. He did have four sacks uh, in the season, so it's not tremendous. It's not something that, that you know, the, the stats, um, you know, glare off the page, but I do expect Kalaja Kansi to have a, a solid sophomore season and maybe build on this. So Tampa Bay, they need somebody to step up on that defensive line. I think Kansi might be in a good place to, to make that sophomore step up. Um, hopefully no sophomore slumps for him. He's a pit guy. Love that. So Kalaja Kansi, nice blend of youth and, and upside too. So I like him to hit this year. Uh, at, moving on, we have Zach Sealer, defensive end from Miami. He's a little bit older, 28 years old, but you know what? With age comes wisdom. And I think at 28 years old, you can't say that's very old. We've seen guys late 30s, Nico Autry, 34. Um, guys can have value in their 30s. So right now, Zach Sealer's coming off a tremendous, his, his best season so far, 63 uh, tackles, 10 sacks. So again, I, I mentioned my 50 tackle, 10 sack, um, you know, uh, ceiling he hit that he clips that he had 63 tackles in 10 sacks so more than happy with that um, additionally Miami loses uh, Christian Wilkins he's gone he's playing for the Raiders now so hey maybe Wilkins there helped Zach Sealer you can make a case for it. absolutely I get that but now Wilkins is not there he's somebody who was getting a lot of tackles himself they're missing Phillips um, they're missing Chubb to start the year we're hope we're hoping not but maybe the case um, so there might be a void in production there, and there might be opportunity for Sealer to really um, capitalize on, on those guys not being there and having a similar year in production. Uh, he And, and Sealer is only owned in 40% of, of uh, Sleeper League. So, again, I mentioned Cooper is one of my favorites. I, and here we are again. Zach Sealer is one of my favorite guys to take late in IDP startup drafts right now. Uh, moving on, we got DJ Wanham, 26 years old. He goes from Minnesota to Carolina. We saw him have a nice season last year, really nice season. He had 60 tackles and eight sacks. So basically, I'm going to call that my 50-10 right there, you know, give a little bit on each side. Um, he had a tremendous season. So at only 26 years old, only owned in 34% of sleeper leagues out there. DJ Wanham, maybe he doesn't exactly become Brian Burns, but that's why they signed him to, to kind of be the, the Brian Burns role and, and wreak havoc there and, Hey, if you can give me anything similar to what Brian Burns is doing, I like that trajectory. So I, I like DJ Wanham. Uh, you know, not somebody who I'm banking on as my defensive lineman number one, but as a number two or number three, I think there's upside there in Wanham. So I like him too. Moving on, we got another uh, outside linebacker from Tampa Bay, or I should say another uh, defensive player from Tampa Bay, and that is Yaya Diaby, at only 24 years old, another young guy. Um, he's only owned in 26% of leagues out there. He came off a season where he had 39, a, a rookie season, 39 tackles in seven and a half sacks, which uh, to me, that's that's very close to the, my 50 and 10. Uh, maybe this sophomore year, he can eclipse that. So Diaby, you know, that's a, it's a curious case. Who would you rather have more, Diaby or Cansey? Uh, maybe I'm thinking Diaby at this point. You know, I, I, I like Cansey. He's my pit guy, but... Anytime you can give me a nice blend of tackles and sacks, I'm on board. So Yaya Diaby, a great get as well uh, on the defensive line position. Moving on next, we're going to start hitting some defensive tackles. First being Derek Brown. Derek Brown, 26 years old from Carolina, set the record from the defensive tackles position with tackles. Uh, last year, I believe it was 103. Um, yeah, he's only owned somehow in 46% of Yahoo leagues. He should not. I'm sorry, of sleeper leagues. He should not be on this podcast for me to talk about. He should definitely be owned higher than that. Uh, but, hey, capitalize on ignorance. 
Derek Brown, 100, 103 tackles last season with two sacks. Listen, if you're banking on the sacks, you know, you're going to have to to take a loss here because Derek Brown isn't doesn't seem to be that kind of guy to to light the world up in sacks. He's not Aaron Donald, but what he can do is get you tackles. And if you can get bankable tackles, this is not somebody who just had a fluke. I believe last season he had over 60 tackles. So he really put all the pieces together. Now they lose Brian Burns. They're going to need him still again. So um, I, I don't I don't really expect the, the repeat, you know, 103 set the record. I'm, I'll put the money on that. It's not going to happen again. But if he can get me somewhere 85 to 100 tackles, more than valuable for Derek Brown. So Derek Brown, 26 years old. And if you're playing in a defensive tackle, um, you know, specific position, He's probably going to go higher. He's he's not going to be somebody you have to wait or what you're going to have the luxury to wait on. Um, but yeah, Derek Brown for any defensive line position out there, I love him. And I think this is uh, me personally. I bank on the sack, uh, bank on the tackles. And sometimes it's tough to bank on the sacks. So uh, I, I kind of lean towards those kind of players, guys. Christian Wilkins, who can give me um, definite tackles, but also high upside with sacks too. Another defensive tackle is Ed Oliver. Another 26-year-old owned in 45% of sleeper leagues. He had his best season uh, to date with 51 tackles, nine and a half sacks. Boom. You know, this is a perfect example. 50 and 10. You know, 51 and nine and a half. That's that's perfect. If he can do that again, they need him to. Buffalo has some voids on their line. Um, I think that, you know, what we saw last year, what the prospect, uh, who, who Ed Oliver was coming into the league, how we respected him, I think this is who he is. And so if he can give me another 50 and 10 this year, more than bankable um, and, and only owned in 45 percent of leagues out there. So great get at Oliver uh, moving on. Christian Barmore. Christian Barmore is really down. He's owned in 33 percent of leagues. I don't get it. Uh, he was a second round pick. He's 24 years old. So youth is definitely there. We're talking 2023. He had 64 tackles and eight and a half sacks, which is tremendous. Um, blended, blended player, multifaceted. He gets the sacks, he gets the tackles. I get it. The first, uh, you know, the first, first look for him in the NFL was not good, but he made right. And uh, this past year and at only 24 years old, he got the contract 90 mil. So I think the, the Patriots know what they have in him. And, uh, this is one of my favorite sleepers, even though he's a defensive tackle, I'm not afraid I'll put him in the defensive line. Um, at least as a number two guy, if if not number one, you know, you can make a case. So Christian Barmore, and, and I know it's not really bankable. You want to see more of it, but I'm sticking my neck out for this guy. And, and I'm telling you, go get him in your startups right now. Now I have four rookies who I will call honorable mentions, um, you know, on the defensive line who I think you don't have to pay a crazy price tag for. Number one, these guys are all owned in less than 50 percent of leagues. The highest right now is off the first one I'll say is the highest owned percentage out of these four is Braden Fisk. Braden Fisk is owned in 35% of leagues. This is not somebody who you want to start um, right away as your, you know, even number two guy, maybe not even a number three guy, but we're talking depth here. Um, Braden Fisk, 24 years old, only owned in 35% of sleeper leagues. I definitely think him in verse uh, in LA can definitely help fill the void of Aaron Donald, the loss there. These two are teammates. I really like verse too, but he's going to be a, a lot heavier of a price tag. He's not owned and he's not under 50%. So there goes that. Um, but Braden Fisk is. So I think Braden Fisk is a little bit slept on here. High motor type of player. Uh, probably not going to hit rookie year, but if you're, if you can afford the weight and, and you're looking for depth, I think Braden Fisk is a great get. Also Braylon Trice from Atlanta only owned in 21% of sleeper leagues. It was about a month ago. I'm thinking to myself, Dallas Turner is going to go to uh, Atlanta Falcons with number, I think it was number seven pick. And I expected him to do good things there, get playing time right away, make an immediate impact. He did not go there. Dallas Turner went to Minnesota, owned over 50% of the leagues. We're not going to talk about him anymore. We are going to talk about Braylon Trice though. Braylon Trice, third round pick, 23 years old, he is landing in a spot where he's going to be able to make an immediate impact. Now, whether he, the production level is there, the jury's still out, but he's going to have the every opportunity to, to make right in his rookie year. So Braylon Trice, if you're looking for some depth here, great uh, defensive lineman to get. I like him a lot. 
Uh, moving on, Chris Braswell. I'm going three for three on these uh, Tampa Bay Bucks here. Braswell, definitely, I think he can he can get some snaps on the defensive uh, line there. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if he overtakes uh, a depth role at first and, and maybe overtakes. I forget the guy, Shroy, uh, Shroya Tonka, whatever that guy's name is there, but. I definitely think that um, Chris Braswell with time will be a hit. So only owned in 32% of Yahoo leagues. Again, depth piece. Don't want to start him this year, but you can do a lot worse. He's available really late. Chris Braswell, don't forget about him. And finally, Marshawn Neeland from the Cowboys, a guy who was drafted high price tag, second round. Um, with me, I just think that they're going to need him. I think that uh, Dallas, their their defensive lineman that they, they pick over time, hit, whether it be year one, year two, year three. Um, so I think Marshawn Neal and good things are in his future. Definitely a guy you can get super late, only owned in 20% of sleeper apps out there, 22 years old. So definitely has youth and potential on his side. So Neyland, um, definitely a last couple picks. You know, if you can get him there, great depth, great shot in the dark there. So we're going to move into linebackers. but be From the IDP plus team. Get the IDP Plus Rookie Draft right now for $9.99 for a limited time and get updates every Friday as the NFL draws near. So check out the link in the show description and download your copy today. Once again, Rookie Guide, uh, IDP Plus, our own team, our Rookie Guide, just for $10, one time buy. Uh, and it's only for a limited time. Prices are going to go up. So get your updates every Friday. And you're going to love that rookie draft. So we got a lot of um, writers writing right now, a lot of uh, podcasters doing videos like myself. So you can get all our inside information on these rookies. If that's you know what you're focusing on is rookies, $9.99, one-time fee. So go ahead and, and uh, reap those benefits. Uh, moving on, we're going to look at linebackers now. My favorite, love linebackers. The first guy I'm going to mention, again, going in highest owned percentage at 48% is Kenneth Murray. Kenneth Murray feels like he's been in the league a while. He's only 25 years old, 107 tackles um, this past year, which which is actually a repeat of his highest ever in his career. So 107 tackles and three sacks. To me, he's you know I'm not really looking at a, a LB1 potential here. I don't think that's what you're going to get. Uh, I liked him more as a, a Charger than I do a Titan. But next to Aziz Al Shair. I definitely think that Kenneth Murray can can definitely um, be a stable force as far as tackles go. I'm not expecting the sacks. I'm not, I'm not counting on that. I do think that uh, that Kenneth Murray he can he can pay off. He can definitely be better than what we're thinking right now. What we're penciling him in as he's only 25 years old. He's dealt with some injuries. Maybe the best days are, are ahead. I'm not banking on it. But if you can give me around 90 to 100 tackles, I definitely like you, Kenneth Murray. So. Um, Kenneth Murray, definitely in my second linebacker, a little bit older at this point. That's okay. He can still play. And that's 30-year-old Shaq Thompson for the Carolina Panthers. Uh, Shaq Thompson, he's only owned in 44% of sleeper leagues out there. I get it. He had a bad year. He got hurt. He only played two games, broke his leg. In those two games, he only had eight tackles. So a lot of uncertainty here. Is he going to be a starter? Is Trevin Wallace going to take his spot? I don't think so. I think Shaq Thompson's he's proved himself. He's a leader of that team, an anchor of that defense. Um, 30 to me at, at a linebacker, this is definitely somebody who I'm ranking higher in redraft, but 30 to me isn't over the hill. I still think Shaq Thompson plays. I think there's a lot of opportunity for tackles there in Carolina. He doesn't have to get sacks. That's okay. Um, get your 100 tackles. Get your 120. Um, I think this is a guy who had 135 tackles twice in his career. So Shaq Thompson, I think he can do it again. Um, if, you know, once again, I'm not, I'm not banking on 135. If you can get me 110, 120, great. So Shaq Thompson, uh, only owned in 44% of sleeper leagues out there. Definitely a guy who you can get late uh, as a linebacker. Moving on back to a young guy here, Damon Clark, 23 years old from Dallas. Um, only owned in 43% of leagues, coming off a rookie season where he had 107 tackles, no sacks, but that's okay. 107 tackles plays, and they were playing around with him for a while. I didn't know if he was going to start. He wasn't an immediate starter. Um, so he got a late, late uh, crack, and I, and I think he made well off it. So I don't know if he's going to exactly be 
the the middle linebacker. He might be a weak side linebacker, but that's okay as long as he's on the field playing majority of snaps. And, and let me also uh, tell you too, Damon Clark was not out there playing. 95 100 percent of snaps he was playing like 70s low 80s so i definitely think if they want to give uh him more of a, a run this year and 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 pay more respect to clark i think those numbers can easily uh ascend and i'm not talking 150 tackles maybe we're talking 120 130 here so damon clark definite value um definitely a guy who you want to take a shot at at least as a bench piece um is a third linebacker, I, I would say that's acceptable. I'm not really penciling him in as a top two, but uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he held, held that value in the in the season. So Damon Clark, don't forget about him, only 43% owned. Next guy is another young guy, Micah McFadden, 24 years old, only owned in 41% of leagues. He had 97 tackles in a sack last year, and I definitely like this fit again because, uh, like I said with Shaq Thompson, this is a bad team. Giants are a bad team. They're going to be uh, – their defense is going to be on the field an awful lot this year. Um, Bobby O'Karake is great, but you're not paying that high premium on him. You're waiting and you're looking for Micah McFadden because uh, 100-plus tackles uh, late, maybe free right now and free agents, you can't find better than that. So Micah McFadden, I like him as a banger here. This is not somebody who I'm – uh, looking for to get sacks. I'm just counting on the, the tackles all day with McFadden. And I think he's a solid uh, number two, number three, um, you know, depth piece. If you can have him as a number three on your bench, great ad there. So Micah McFadden, really like him. Um, moving on, we have EJ Speed, 28 years old. One of my favorites here, only owned in 40% of sleeper apps. Now, EJ Speed is a guy who, if everyone's taken, you know, the foyers, um, you know, the big names out there, Bobby Wagner's that, uh, listen, go ahead. I'm going to wait. I'm going to take EJ Speed late. He's only owned in 40%, like I mentioned. So EJ Speed came on tremendously last year. Zaire Franklin, we saw kind of like, you know, lose his luster a little bit. Still think he's up there in the rankings. I still like Franklin a lot, but EJ Speed really goes under the radar. He uh, amassed 100 tackles last season with a sack, really came on late. Another guy who did not get a, a fair shake when we look at the stats. He definitely – there was room for, for him to have way more than 100 tackles. He didn't really get that um, starting designation until a couple weeks into the season, so um, maybe halfway through. So EJ Speed is definitely someone who um, ended the year on on with a lot of speed, and I think he can start this year, 2024 with a lot of speed as well. So this is a guy who I'm definitely poaching. Um, maybe in the middle rounds, middle middle to later rounds, I'm jumping one or two rounds to make sure I get him. I'm not uh, completely letting him fall so far and letting somebody else get him because he's an absolute diamond in the rough. This is a, a stalwart on a defense here. And I think Indy's uh, defense is pretty set. I think he's going to be starting here, no question. And EJ Speed, we're going to see a better year even than we saw last year. So love him. Um, next player is Trenton Simpson. Trenton Simpson is a hot commodity right now in startup leagues. He's owned in 39% of sleeper leagues. But if you're if you're playing with people who know IDP well, he's definitely going to be owned in way more than that uh, once the season comes up. Uh, he's going to be taken pretty early because he is filling in for Patrick Queen there. Patrick Queen's now with Pittsburgh. Um, but Trenton Sim Simpson's going to be the number two next to Roquan Smith. And we saw what kind of value. Um, you know, Patrick Queen did with that. So that's what we're thinking Trenton Simpson's going to be. He played in the game last late in the 2023 season, had seven tackles against Pittsburgh. So we got a little glimpse of what he's going to be. Yeah, I like him a lot. I like Trenton Simpson. He's going to be their starter. Um, I, I expect him to have well over 100 tackles and, and be a uh, fantasy IDP asset down the line, you know, in 2024. So Trenton Simpson, another great get who's going to have a breakout season. Next is a little bit older, 28 years old, but Blake Cashman, man. Blake Cashman had a heck of a year. He's only owned in 37% of sleeper app leagues. Last year with Houston, he had 104 tackles, um, two sacks. He had a couple, I want to say two double, two or three double-digit tackle performances, and that's, that's hard to come by. Only a, a certain mold of players can do that. So Blake Cashman, I really liked him originally out of Minnesota. Uh, I thought he should have been playing more with the Jets when he was there. Well, 
he came to Houston and, and made good on uh, my wishes and, and really showed out last year. So now he goes to Minnesota with Ivan Pace, who I really like too. Um, both of those guys, I'm, I'm poaching. I'm trying to get them late um, because I think overall they're slept on, especially – uh, especially Cashman because the way we saw pace end so on, on such a high note um, when Jordan Hicks was out last year. So I think Blake Cashman is really slept on and only 37% of leagues. This is a guy who's probably going to play the middle, um, probably going to eclipse 110, 115 tackles. So definite uh, LB2 status there for, for Cashman and, and, and a great number two linebacker for your IDP team. Moving on, we got Denzel Perryman. Denzel Perryman is 31 years old, only owned in 29% of Yahoo leagues. And I get this one. Um, Denzel Perryman is going to be a starter, returns to his former team in the Chargers. They have new coaches now. Uh, they did bring him in still, but they have new coaches. Um, they have some young guys there, that, that Diane Henley, uh, Junior Colson, that are expected to be the guy. And, and I could see that. I could see that uh, play out. At the same time, Denzel Perryman's a vet. You want to let him, um, you know, start, show these guys the ropes before you hand it off to them. So me personally, I think Denzel Perryman's going to have a starting role. Um, we saw him have eclipse 100-plus uh, tackles uh, just a few short years ago. He had 76 tackles last year, and he was quite injured. He also was suspended too. Um, so I don't think Denzel Perryman, looking at that 76 piece last year, he didn't get a fair shake. He should have eclipsed 100 yet again. Um, so if he can get close to 100 this year, that's great value. So I like Denzel Perriman as a late, late stab if he's out there. You want somebody who's on the field playing majority of snaps, and he's at least going to give you that. Um, and, and next guy, Diane Henley, is, is on the same team, the same Chargers team. Take them both because uh, Denzel Perriman might be right here right now getting you uh, tackles, but if he eventually does get hurt or you know time just plays on and he retires in a year or two, um, hey, maybe even there's a change of the guard and, and Henley runs away with a job. I think uh, Henley can definitely um, be productive on your IDP plus or I'm sorry, on your IDP uh, rosters. He's only owned in 32 percent of leagues. He, he didn't play much last year. We only saw him in a game or two, 11 tackles. So this is a, uh, a guy who it's a it's a complete going on a whim. You're, you're expecting him to have a role. Um, if he doesn't, he's pretty much burned you. But to me, I'm going to preach patience with him and, and kind of let him be the next man. Don't draft him with to be your starter right away. Draft him as depth, and it might pay off tremendously. He might be a Trenton Simpson of Baltimore. So that's the kind of caliber we're looking at here. But I think Simpson's a lot more bankable than Henley right now. Um, moving on, we got K.J. Britt. K.J. Britt kind of taking over for Devin White there in Tampa Bay. He's 24 years old. He's only owned in 18% of sleeper apps. That's the lowest linebacker uh, owned right here is KJ Britt. So KJ Britt, if you're out there, you think that he's going to replace Devin White. I mean, really all they have left is, is still Levante David, who's a baller. But next to him, they need somebody, right? So KJ, they really didn't address it much in the draft. So uh, KJ Britt was there last year. He had 19 tackles. Really, really didn't see much of them, but – this is somebody who's young still. Uh, I think he's going to give be given every opportunity to to earn himself a role in that inside linebacker uh, unit um, next to Levante David. So somebody who I'm not banking on. Um, I would be I wouldn't be surprised if he he's returned L, LB two numbers, but uh, I think it's going to take some time, and I'm not banking on it right away. But with that being said, it's a great stab for the future. Maybe he does have a great. Uh, season and he's resigned there. He's he's you know a, a anchor of their defense. So KJ Britt is a great stab late uh, if you're looking for a linebacker who can be a starter and and get you some tackles. Um, moving on next is Tyrell Dodson. I'm up in the air about this guy. He's he makes the cut. He's only owned in 37 percent of IDP leagues out there. Now Tyrell Dodson, on one note, he's a starter. He's a bona fide starter right now. You look at the depth chart. Um, for the Seahawks, he's penciled in uh, next to Jerome Baker. Now, the thing is for me is, on one hand, I like him. He's he's underappreciated as a starter at only 37% of leagues. He did have 70 tackles and two and a half sacks last year for Buffalo um, while uh, filling in for injured players. Matt Milano and uh, Bernard had some injuries there. But Terrell Dodson, I don't really know who he is, you know, at this point. Is, is he – we've seen him for four or five years on Buffalo, hasn't really got a chance. Now he's a starter here. 
uh, in, in Seattle. Is it going to hit? Maybe. So uh, if that's what you're thinking, he's definitely slept on. Um, but Tyrell Dodson, I'm on the fence about this guy. And a reason why is uh, one of the one of the uh, rookies that I, I really like as a linebacker is Tyrese Knight. Um, you know, Jerome Baker. Jerome Baker is a solid tackles guy, also multifaceted, gets sacks. Maybe he, you know, maybe he's not all that um, tackle machine that we think he's going to be. Uh, at that point, they need a second linebacker there. Tyrell Dodson, maybe he's brought there to be the starter. Maybe it does not work out. Maybe Tyrese Knight, who is a fourth round pick out of UTEP, he's shifty, he's fast. Maybe the new coaches really like, uh, you know, that pick they had in him in the fourth round. Maybe Tyrese Knight is is, is surpassing um, Tyrell Dodson before the season even starts or shortly after. So that's my hesitation with Dodson. Um, you know, he is a starter by by trade right now. I just don't – I can't guarantee that it's going to be the whole season. On on the other hand, Tyrell Dodson might start week one and, and never relinquish the job. So um, play it how you want. Do your research on him. we got a long way to go before the season starts. And my three sleeper rookies, uh, I mentioned Tyrese Knight, um, fourth rounder from UTEP for Seattle. I, I really like him as a depth piece. This is somebody who I would not be surprised to, like I said before, see uh, – year one value and be talked about when it comes to redraft even, but two other guys, uh, Cedric Gray. I really like he is uh, on the Titans as well. So they have a couple good line linebackers there. Now they have Aziz Al Shair. They have Kenneth Murray. Now they get Cedric Gray. They also have Jack Gibbons there. Um, this could go a lot of different ways, but one of them could be that Cedric Gray is a starter with Aziz next to Aziz Al Shair. Um, so at some point, you know, whether injuries hit, whether they just like this rookie a lot, there's a lot of hype on Cedric Gray out of UNC. And I think it's a fine landing spot for him. I don't I don't really respect the the Gibbons, the Murray. You know, to me, I I think, uh, you know, if there's a, a rookie that's going to break out, um, maybe, of course, Edron Cooper, Peyton Wilson, those guys are a little bit higher on the list. But Cedric Gray is in a great position to uh, garner some tackles this year for sure. And finally, Tyrese Knight. I mentioned him for Seattle. Um, oh, I'm sorry. And finally, Jeremiah Trotter. Jeremiah Trotter is one of my favorite uh, projected breakouts this season. I love the the lineage with him playing for the same team his father did. Um, I think this guy is going to be a fifth round forget. I think you know we're going to look back and say I can't believe this guy was a fifth round. Um, I think he's very talented. They in Philadelphia there they have uh, Devin White. They have the Kobe Dean is Devin White going to be more of an inside backer? Is he going to be trying to replace Hassan uh, Reddick on the outside a little bit, getting sacks? So that's my number one thing is is you know who is Devin White at this point? And number two, the second linebacker there, Nakobe Dean, um, he had massive injuries to deal with last year. Maybe he's just too fast to really like put it all together and stay healthy. He's a great prospect and all, but. Um, Jeremiah Trotter, you know, I, I just see this one working out for Philadelphia. I, I think he's going to be um, the, the starter uh, for Philly before, um, you know, long before most people think. So I, I really like Trotter a lot. He's probably my biggest, next to Peyton Wilson, my biggest breakout uh, linebacker. And for being a fifth rounder, I definitely think that uh, he's slept on right now and only owned in 33% of leagues. This is a dynasty, um, you know, tycoon. I think this is. Uh, not really looking at it so much in redraft right now, but in dynasty, a hundred percent a guy I want to have on my team as a depth piece at linebacker. So, um, Jeremiah Trotter, I think he's hungry, he's a dog. Um, Jeremiah Trotter, Cedric Gray, and Tyrese Knight are my three sleepers there as far as rookies. And before we take a look at our last position group, defensive backs, I wanted to, to give you a reminder listen. Get your first month of IDP Plus Premium for just $1. We're not just some pretty faces here at the IDP Plus team. Maybe we are. Maybe we aren't. That's up for debate. But one thing that's not up for debate is that we have an entire suite of tools and rankings for both offense and defense, plus rookie rankings, injury trackers, snap tools, premium articles, and more. So right now, get your first month for just $1 uh, with the promo code MOCKDRAFT when you check out. So head over to idpguys.org after the show and get ahead of your lazy league mates and, and uh, start your match, your, start your march toward fantasy football greatness today with the promo code MOCKDRAFT. 
Link and the details are in the show description. So moving to our last segment here, defensive backs, man. Defensive backs is interesting. This is definitely a position that I say fade the most. Uh, you really don't have to even walk out of your draft with defensive backs. This is definitely uh, an off-season OTA mini camp kind of situation where um, you're listening, you're you're looking uh, up information, depth charts, reading reports from every team, and finding who's going to be the starter. There was a lot of guys at this point last year um, that we didn't know what kind of caliber player they were going to be. Right? Think about Jalen Petrie, what we thought of him who he became right think about jesse bates what what we thought of him who he became um so definitely even like julian blackman i didn't really believe in him last year he had a great season so um it's a very volatile position and because of that stay away from it definitely don't take like winfield antoine winfield um you know it's your first defensive player even though he might be the best um player at his position still don't take it. There's, there's six sacks. It's not going to happen again. Um, you know, guys who who had the most tackles as the safeties probably don't repeat. So there's a lot of uh, moving parts when it comes to defensive backs. Um, so always do your information, but fade them. Don't take them early. Take defensive backs like last. You know, you can definitely get solid guys late, and that's what we're going to do right now. So the first defensive back owned in 45% of sleeper app leagues. That is 27-year-old Jordan Whitehead. Jordan Whitehead is coming to his own. Uh, he had 97 tackles last season, half a sack with four picks. So this guy, if you're in a tackles-heavy league, he plays. If you're in a you know big play uh, scoring league, he plays there too. Julian, Jordan Whitehead is just really solid. Uh, he's not old, 27 years old. He's experienced vet at this point. I, I like him to be stable here, to have another 90 to 100. Uh, tackle season and I just want to point out too with these defensive backs no matter whether it's a defensive back you're starting a cornerback uh, you really can't bank much like I had said before Winfield had six sacks last year it's not gonna I, I, I would bet it's not gonna happen again so what you need to do as far as defensive backs is just gauge the tackles man that's all it's you don't have to you're not doing rocket science here you're just finding out what guys are going to get the most tackles sacks happen I get it Picks happen. You're not going to find Deron Bland this year getting double-digit picks, you know, pick sixes, multiple picks. You, you can't gauge that. You just got to be in the right place at the right time and get lucky for that. So um, we're here to gauge tackles, it's tackles only, and, and if other things happen, so be it. But that's the best barometer for defensive backs is just look at the tackles. So moving on, I mentioned it before, Julian Blackman. Uh, first year as a, as a starting safety he had in 15 games 88 tackles and four interceptions. So Julian Blackman had a really safe um, tackle floor there. Had a really solid year. I was surprised. He's a smaller safety. He was playing cornerback early, earlier in his career. Um, so this one put me on surprise. I even learned with this one. But Julian Blackman, I won't make the same mistake twice. As long as he's a starter there, he's healthy. When the season rolls around, I really like him uh, on that Colts defense. So. Blackman's a solid guy, only 44% owned. Could easily be a starter in a, in a deeper uh, IDP league. Next guy, Jordan Fuller, 26 years old, former Ram. Now he goes to Carolina, only owned in 36% of Yahoo leagues. This is not somebody who's playing in the box, um, getting sacks, never was. He is just a solid tackler, and he gets picks. Last season, 2023, 93 tackles uh, and three interceptions. And I believe this is the the – Second or third time he's eclipsed over 90 tackles. Um, I, I really liked him and, and Jordan Poyer. I'm sorry, not Poyer, uh, Taylor Rapp when they were at um, the Rams. I really like that tag team. Um, so I, I really, I still like both of these guys, even though they're on different teams now. Jordan Fuller, I definitely, like I'd said before about Shaq Thompson, Carolina's D is going to be out there a lot. So I think Jordan Fuller is going to have a lot of opportunities to, to get tackles. And he's a solid tackle guy. So um, 93 tackles. If he can repeat that or get anywhere close to it, uh, at only 36% owned, that's great value here and could easily be a starter. Um, moving on, playing for the Steelers now, Deshaun Elliott. Deshaun Elliott, I love this signing for the Steelers, um, not only as a Pittsburgh guy, but just the, the kind of player he is. He was a freak. Uh, he had two awesome years, one with Detroit, one with Baltimore. Now he signs as, as a rival. You know, he was at Baltimore. Now he signs with Pittsburgh. I love the signing. 
I just think that at 27 years old, there's still some great seasons for Deshaun Elliott, uh, and we're going to see that this year. Only owned in 34% of, se- uh, of, of leagues. He had two previous seasons, again, once with the uh, Lions and one with the Ravens, where he eclipsed more than 80 tackles. Um, he's not going to be getting sacks. At least he wasn't before. He's not He's not that type of player, but he's going to roam in the backfield and rack up those tackles, and, and I think that's what we need next to Minka Fitzpatrick. Steelers had so many problems at safety last year. Even Fitzpatrick wasn't healthy, so – Um, They're going to double down, make sure that they have two good safeties, that they're not in the same predicament. And this is definitely a guy who's going to be a projected starter. So Deshaun Elliott, I had him before, was a solid player. Uh, I'll have him again this year for sure. So I hope you do the same. Um, Moving on, one of my favorites, one of my favorite sleepers here, probably my favorite on this list, Taylor Rapp, man. Taylor Rapp's only 26 years old, only owned in 30% of sleeper leagues, probably because he wasn't a starter last year. Uh, they had Poyer, they had Hyde. Um, he wasn't a full-time player. He had some injuries of his own. But Taylor Rapp's a real player. Uh, he was he was solid when uh, him and Fuller were playing for the Rams. I believe he had a couple of se- a couple of seasons over 90 tackles. Last year, look at the numbers. Uh, I'm glad they were so low. He was a part-time player, only had 45 tackles, half a sack, and one pick. But there was no zeros to that. All three of those, the boxes checked tackles sacks and and interceptions he gets them all Um, i'm expecting him to at least have 85 90 tackles which means he's he's a bona fide uh db2 he's definitely a starting defensive back for um, my team and for yours too so taylor rapp is my favorite uh safety sleeper here who's owned in less than well less than 50 percent of sleeper leagues Um, moving on we have amani hooker amani hooker is very slept on too only 27 percent of leagues uh, he's owned, and this is somebody who's locked up. He got a contract, multi-year contract, um, always has, has dealt with some injuries, especially some hamstring injuries, but only 25 years old. This guy can make tackles. Um, Amani Hooker, 80 tackles last season. He's not a sack guy. He's not. He's going to play deep. He's not going to get you sacks, not in the box. He only had one pick. But, again, going back to defensive backs, why we're here is the tackles. And he's somebody who can do that. So as long as Hooker stays healthy for the Titans, he's going to be a great defensive back, DB2, uh, for your team. Next guy has immense upside, only 25 years old. Ifatu Malafonwu from the Detroit Lions. If you're somebody who were playing in the uh, – blessed to have played in the fantasy playoffs last year, you probably heard of Malafonwu. Uh, he only had 31 tackles. Uh, he had also three – sacks and two picks and i believe he only was playing four or five of those last games so this is somebody who did major major damage uh in a, only a limited amount of time in in, in a limited amount of reps last season now people might be scared away they, they drafted uh a cornerback they they have brian branch who a lot of people are high on so kirby joseph played well himself but uh you know what and and this might be a guy who maybe just doesn't see the role for whatever reason. Uh, They have so many guys there. Maybe that's the reason. And, you know, worst case scenario, he doesn't get the starting role. He doesn't play. He's a reserve and you drop him. But for what he did those last four or five games, the the upside is immense. Um, Mela Fonwu is definitely not somebody who I'm um, taking as my number one safety and, and, you know, uh, setting it and forgetting it. This is definitely going to be a little bit of a risky pick. But if he can end up in that role that he had last year, oh, man, the the, this, the upside is tantalizing with Melifon Wu. So definitely somebody who I want is like a DB2, DB3 on my team, only owned in 26% of leagues. You're going to get him very, very late. Uh, and don't forget about him because other people might. Um, another guy who's a, a big sleeper of mine who I love is P.J. Locke. P.J. Locke for Denver. Right now they have like Brandon Jones talk, like is he going to be the safety – P.J. Locke, another guy similar to Melifon Wu, who didn't play um, every game. He only played 12 games last season, but he had 53 tackles, uh, three sacks, and two interceptions. And I think he had a a two-sack game, maybe week 10, week 12, something like that. Um, P.J. Locke, for four or five weeks there, while he was starting and healthy, was a great, um, you know, back-end, bottom-end DB1, uh, high upside DB2. And he was getting um, eight to 10 tackles a game with some sacks. So definitely piques my interest. Um, this is definitely the, the lowest 
percentage owned in my defensive backs here at 21%. People are sleeping on him um, like crazy. And, and you know what? That's why you're here, because you're going to get that information. P.J. Locke is, is probably not a guy you want to set out as, as your second defensive back in a, in a starter, you know, since um, week one. But if he gets that role, you don't want to not have him. You don't want to let him go to somebody else's team because only 27 years old. We saw glimpses last season. I think if he gets the starting role, which is the big question here, he's going to be able to put all the pieces together and be a solid, solid uh, safety for your defensive, uh, for your IDP leagues out there. So PJ Locke, I'm not saying it's money in the bank. He's going to have to earn the job first. But right now, while you know Brandon Jones, other names are being talked about, Definitely don't forget about P.J. Locke and capitalize on that. Then we got two corners. So my last two players, before I talk about my rookie honorable mentions, are corners. Um, two of my favorite corners, uh, Kenny Moore, I would say, is my favorite, but he's higher than 50%, so he doesn't make the cut here. Nate Hobbs. Nate Hobbs is 24 years old. This is, I want to say, it's going to be his third season, so he's young, um, but only owned in 47% of sleeper apps. If you're somebody who has to roster a cornerback, you are absolutely taking this all day. Nate Hobbs is phenomenal. He's not like the, you know, uh, Jalen Ramsey. He's not a huge name out there as a cornerback, as, you know, a shutdown defender, but Nate Hobbs makes tackles. As a matter of fact, in 13 games last season, he had 86 tackles. And this is not a fluke. This is him. That's what his game is. Um, he might not be the shutdown corner, but he gets the makes the tackles when you know the the player gets the ball in their hand. So uh, again, going back to defensive backs, if you can bank on tackles now, cornerbacks, if you can get cornerbacks uh, designated position, you have to start a cornerback, and they're getting tackles like a Kenny Moore, um, like a Nate Hobbs. It just it's it elevates you so much. You know, it, it, that, that's like basically having two players in one. Um, so Nate Hobbs, I really like him. If you have to start a cornerback, he also did have a sack last season and he also had a pick too. So not just a one-stop shop with uh, Nate Hobbs. This is somebody who's very undervalued, um, but still 47%, not hugely uh, slept on. So he's, he's by the season starts, he's going to probably be up to that 50% as he should, but take advantage of he's out there right now. Another cornerback, I'd say this guy's probably my second favorite next to um, Kenny Moore, and that's Teron Johnson. Teron Johnson, 98 tackles this past season. Uh, this is not a fluke. Again, this is somebody who's hit 90 before multiple times. So 27-year-old um, cornerback, and, and uh, you know, I was scared that uh, Buffalo, like maybe Teron Johnson was playing so much, doing so well because they had injuries there, Tredavious White. But like I said, man, I, when I looked at the, the rap sheet, the stats of, of back in time, he's been there. That's his type of player. When he's healthy, he makes those tackles. Um, he, you know, he had a, a sack last season too. So this is a very versatile player, somebody who, if I'm starting two defensive backs, I'm probably not starting Toronto Johnson due to consistency. But if I have to start a cornerback, he's one of the probably top five, top 10 I'm picking. Um, so I really like Teron Johnson. I think still fine days ahead at 27 years old and only owned in 28% of sleeper apps. If you have to start a corner, um, Teron Johnson is my guy for, for the bang for your buck, only 28% owned. He's very underrated. Um, you know, even you, you can even say in two defensive backs, you're going to start Teron Johnson, and that's more than serviceable. So that speaks a lot uh, when these cornerbacks can, can play with the big dogs, with the safety. So, uh, yeah, Teron Johnson, Nate Hobbs, those are my two cornerbacks. And then I got four safeties that are – uh, rookies who I think will hit. Now, two two uh, second round picks here. Number one is Cole Bishop to Buffalo. I, re I really like Cole Bishop out of U Utah. I think he's a great ball hawk. Um, he's going to probably have great intensity. Obviously, he's going to be a starter right away. That's why I drafted him so early. Uh, you know what? Cole Bishop I really like, but I'm worried about Taylor Rapp. I really like Taylor Rapp. I like Taylor Rapp more, um, quite frankly. So I'm going to draft Taylor Rapp higher, but Cole Bishop, you know, I'm worried about the tackles. If he's such a ball hawk, it makes sense. He's going to play free safety. I assume Taylor Rapp's going to play closer to the box, get more tackles. And that's what we're here for is tackles. So um, Cole Bishop, I'm sure he'll have a, a solid rookie season, but I, I just wouldn't, you know, when we talk about the best two or three safeties in the draft, 
Uh, I don't think it's going to be immediate, um, you know, huge uh, fantasy production right away. I think with time, he's going to be more than fine. But I think people who are going to um, look for him to be the defensive back one on their team are going to be a little bit let down, at least early on. Um, but another guy I like better than even Cole Bishop is Tyler Newbin out of Minnesota, who also goes in the second round to the Giants. Now, I had mentioned how Cole Bishop has – uh, Taylor Rapp to to uh, compliment him and kind of take away some tackles. Now we look at New York Giants. The the free safety there as as of this point is going to be uh, Jason Pinnock. Jason Pinnock is not a tackles guy. He's a ball hawk, which means that um, Tyler Newbin is going to be the guy getting those playing close to the box, cleaning up those um, runs. You know, making those tackles. So I think actually the the case here is Tyler Newbin. If you're banking on tackles. Tyler Newbin is who I'd rather take um, over Bishop. Uh, and I'd say it's close, but it's a definite Tyler Newbin over Cole Bishop if I'm hunting tackles. And that's what you should be doing at the def defensive back position. Um, so Cole Bishop, Tyler Newbin, love those second rounders. Another guy, this guy's in the third rounder now. But I think he could definitely make a splash rookie year. Um, I'm, I'm also paying attention and putting him on my watch list and redraft. And that's Cam Kitchens out of Miami, a third round pick uh, to the uh, Rams. And, and, and the, the kicker here is they, they lost Jordan Poyer. So um, now they have Cam Curl and Cam with a K. Now they also get a, uh, a Cam with a K and Cam Kitchens. So uh, maybe it's a Cam Cam thing. It's a little bit of a, you know, juju there going on. But bottom line is right now their starters are Cam Curl and Russ Yeast. And Russ Yeast – I had a solid, you know, rookie year last year. I believe it was his rookie year. He had a solid year, but like did not light up the world. Um, and so maybe there's some hesitancy from the coaching staff. Like is real is Russ Yeast really our guy when we when we brought in Cam Kitchens in the third round? So I would expect at some point Cam Kitchens is going to get his. He's going to get his uh, opportunity to start to shine. And I would not be surprised. And even in redraft, if Cam Kitchens is going to be a household name by the end of the year. So definitely someone we want to pay attention to in Dynasty. Definitely somebody as a DB three or four, you know, if you want to get some depth here and you're, you're worried about youth, um, can help you in, in both of the – check both of those boxes. So Cam Kitchens, definitely a guy who I like, third rounder out of Miami, fell in a good spot here. I think he'll be a starter in, in short order here um, with the Rams. And my last guy, my last defensive back safety to talk about is Jaden Hicks. Jaden Hicks goes to the uh, Chiefs. He was a fourth-round pick out of Washington State. Really don't know much about Jaden Hicks. To be honest with you, I don't watch college ball. Uh, I just read as soon as they're done and get ready for the NFL. That's when I start reading and do my research. So Jaden Hicks, uh, a lot of people on the IDP Plus team ride for this guy. I know my boy Joe Harlow really likes him. And when Joe Harlow talks, I listen. So um, Jaden Hicks, I'm definitely keeping him at least on my watch list. I recommend him as like a DB4, you know, DB3, DB4 depth piece for your team. We've seen uh, some guys work some magic, you know, coaching staff works some magic with these um, line, uh, with these uh, defensive backs. Even looking at Legereus Sneed here for, for uh, the Chiefs, he even had a, a great uh, tenure that, with the Chiefs. So Jaden Hicks, maybe they work him, work uh, their magic with him too. And they have, I think, Brian Cook as a starter right now. Maybe Jaden Hicks overtakes him, you know, before the season even starts. So uh, this is definitely somebody who I want on my dynasty team. Definitely somebody who I'm going to be keeping tabs on in redraft. And I would not be surprised if Jaden Hicks is a starting safety for the Chiefs in short order. Okay, so wonderful. Thank you for listening. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in the box. Make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. Um, once again, I'm Johnny freaking foot, uh, Johnny freaking football. You can find me on Twitter at Johnny freak and F one. Thank you for rocking with me tonight. We will see you on next week's episode. And as always bless up and good luck.